Hello again! In this third and last video, I'll make the disc sander. I'll begin by cutting and machining the lathe's cover. In order to fold it, I'll make some cuts on the underside, leaving only 1.5mm uncut. It's important that the grain on the final layer of plywood be perpendicular to the cuts, so that it won't break when folding. I'll dampen it a little with water to make the process easier. I try folding it before using glue and it seems to work. I fill all the holes with glue. I use glue on a 0.5mm thick veneer of any kind of wood and put it in place with the help of these plywood pieces and clamps. Ideally, for this kind of operation we would have a mold and counter mold, but with this method we can also achieve decent results. I cut this hole for the belt with a table saw. Now I mark the positions of the screws and drill them. I'll use a bit 0.5mm smaller than the screws. Now, I'll start working on the disc sander. I mark its circumference on the board and cut it. I use a bit one millimeter less wide than the threaded rod when drilling. By rotating the wooden disc when inserting it, I'll create a thread on the plywood itself, allowing me to remove the disc when necessary. Some of you might be thinking, the disc should be tightened in the opposite direction to that of the thread, so that it won't come loose when working, but in this case it's impossible. At first, I consider installing two switches to change the rotation on the engine, but eventually I thought about fastening the disc itself against the washer on the end, and since the thread in the plywood offers greater resistance than a metal nut, it shouldn't be a problem. I will lathe all the pieces to reduce any potential vibrations. Also on the front of the disc to avoid oscillations and make it run smoothly. Now I'll sand the edges of the disc for safety reasons. As you can see, tightening and loosening the disc on the threaded rod offers a fair amount of resistance. I'll start machining all the pieces of its tilting table. The disc must be removable for when we lathe at high revolutions per minute. If we don't remove it, the vibrations could be excessive for lathing due to the diameter of the disc itself. Therefore, I'll use the same fastening system I used for the tailstock and tool rest, allowing me to easily remove the tilting table and disc.
I mark the holes for the screws that will serve as rotation axis. In this case, I will use a bit, 0.5 mm less wide than the screw. I make a groove to insert a U-shaped aluminium profile to slide the miter gauge on top of. I've machined both pieces that will allow me to lock the table at an angle and screw them in like this. I make sure the highest position is at a 90 degree angle between the table and the disc. If that's not the case, I can adjust it on this groove. Now all that's left is to cut and machine the miter gauge. and check if everything is working as intended. I hope to have the plans ready in a few days. I'll let you know here. See you soon.